you gave me power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say something. What? I'm going to say something? Hey, okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Are you glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't hear nobody. Are you glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on, listen. The dead can say they're glad to be here this morning. Y'all alive. Are you glad to be here this morning? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. I'm glad y'all here this morning. Sorry if I put your ear drum out, but I had to make sure you heard me. You heard me? Yeah! I'm so glad you're here. Um, we have been in a sermon series. Say yeah! Yeah! Does anybody remember what the sermon series is? No. <laughs> I knew! I knew. It's the power of words. The power of words. And um, I have to tell you, can I, can I share with you guys something? Yes. Last week, uh, we had a wonderful and beautiful, amazing sermon which was presented and, and brought forth uh, that God used Pastor Talo to preach an amazing sermon. Yes, he did. And he did. Um, Last week, I actually had this sermon ready to go. So it was ready in the tuck, ready to go. And this sermon is the final sermon in our sermon series of the power of words. And you will never guess what that title is. Come on. I want you to take a wild guess what you think it is. Something about BBS. You'd be right. Say yes, 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 yes. No. But close. That's in there. But we are in the workmanship. Spark Studio. Yay! Spark Studio, spread the word. This was last week's sermon. And why do you say, wait, what are you talking about last week's sermon for? Well, see, last week was actually before the start of our VBS. So this was queued up and ready to go that it ended that same time. But guess what? God said, <laughs> I love throwing curveballs. <laughs> and guess what I said? <laughs> I, I love curveballs, yay. I'm so glad that I took the curveball that God threw. Why? Because now this prepares us for our end of our VBS. You see, VBS, of our production of VBS has ended, but VBS has not ended. Oh, baby, it just got started. Mm -hmm. Vacation Bible School is still going because guess what? School is still in session. Yeah. Ding, ding. Yeah. Classes already start. <laughs> we will go, go. Y'all think I can do that? I could. I know all the dances. Your pastor knows them all. Okay, a little bit, but I'll say that I do, and y'all, yeah. Point of the nature is, man, aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad? We had a great time at yeah. VBS. You know what? It got hot, but not too hot. It was never too cold where we couldn't have it. It was just right. You know what? And here's the thing. Lord knows I wanted to see 600 kids come, but you know what he did? He brought just enough. Mm -hmm. He you. brought just the ones that needed to be here to enjoy. Do you know that about God? So let me tell you something about God. It's okay if I talk about God oh, before we get started for a second. Does church, do you mind if I talk about God for a talk second? Do you mind if I talk about him? See, God knows what you need ahead of time. You see, I told you guys before, and if I haven't told you before, let me tell you an interaction I had with God, and it happened right here. Are you ready? Ready. I was walking out of that door. God said, stop. So I stopped. He said, I want you to tell me what's in front of you. I said, a shed. He said, I know a shed is in front of you. That's not what I meant, silly. I said, well, God, you did say what's in front of me. He said, what's, to, what's in front of you and to the right? I said, a house. He said, turn. So I turned. He says, what's in front of you? I said, field to a school and houses beyond that. He said, turn, he said, turn again. 
I turn, so I'm facing Pontiac now. And he says, what do you see? I said, I see houses. He said, now turn again. Now I'm facing our back lot right here where the fences are and all that. And I said, there are apartments and houses and stuff there. <coughs> do you know what God said? What if all that is yours? What if I'm giving that to you? What if I'm giving that to you? And I looked and I said this, thank you, God. Thank you, God. My first answer was, Lord, we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready, God. Just imagine this church. If God brought every single person, that means our neighbor right next to us, if our neighbor right next to us today got dressed and came right, or don't even get dressed, just comes out of their house, walks over here, walks in and sits down. If the houses all down this block on, on Pontiac come out of their houses and sit in this sanctuary today, if all the people on this block get out of their houses and come and sit in this sanctuary today, if all the people down the other side of Pontiac and that old school over there, if all the kids that go to that school says, today I have to go to Sierra Baptist Church and sit there today, are you ready? Are you ready? I don't hear that. Yeah. Maybe your brain is still processing. processing. Because maybe you like, how can all those people fit in here? Yeah. How can all those people fit in here? You know what God is saying? It's time for you to get uncomfortable. It's time for you to get out of comfort. It's time for you to stop being good with where you are and get ready to be moved. You see, guys, we have been talking about the power of words. Mm -hmm. Power of words. Let me tell you something about words. Words do have power. Mm -hmm. You know some of the most powerful words that have ever been uttered? Is this, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Those words have power. And guess what? The individuals that walk in the name of the Lord have power too. Not their power, but the power that God has given them through the Holy Spirit. So I ask a question today. Are you ready? Are you ready for all the people to come here today? Are you ready? Yes. If I said this right now and all those people came, are you ready? If God said, go, and all of them came here, are you ready? Are you ready, church? I'm ready. Amen. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Ready. See, as a pastor, I gotta be ready. Because when God said it to me, I was like, Lord, I'm not ready now, but I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna get ready. And he said, Why do you think I'm showing you this vision? I don't show you something that I don't intend to do. Mm -hmm. Stop and think about what God just said. I don't show you something. I don't intend to do. Mm -hmm. Do you know God has given us this block? No, church. I don't want quiet. I need answers. Yeah. Do you know that God has given you this block? I yes. See, many of us are sitting here doubting God. God, we're here, but I don't think you've given us. God gave you this block. God gave it to you. You know why I know he gave it to you? Because you're sitting here. This church is here. We are a beacon 
to our community. The question is, are we in our community? I know what you're saying. What does that have to do with VBS? Folks, remember when we were talking? Remember all the lessons that you heard through this week? Or did you just study words? Do you remember the messages that you heard this week? Or were you just preparing something fun for the kids to do? Did you hear the lessons each and every week, each and every day as you were going through it? Or were you just going through the motions trying to get to the end of the week? You see, folks, something has to happen today. And you know what has to happen today? you got to be reminded of something. Or you need to walk in something. Or you need to come to terms with something. We're going to look at what that is today. Let's pray and we'll get started. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. If you know it, we're going to do something special after we get done praying. Let's pray and we'll get started. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day and thank you for the many blessings that you give. Father, we are so overjoyed, Father, that today is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, thank you for this amazing time, dear Father Lord, that we have set, a time for, set aside for you. Father, you make time for us, dear Father Lord, and God, we are making time for you. You tell us, God, come. <laughs> All who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Father, you also tell us, seek you first, your kingdom and your righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. You tell us, hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength. And the second, like the first, love thy neighbor as thyself. Father, you keep reminding us to love you. You keep reminding us to put you first. You keep reminding us, Father, to be about your business. You keep reminding us to be the people that you want us to be holy and acceptable, pleasing and acceptable, right in your eyes. And Father, as we are right now, Father, covered in sin and mire and muck, dear God, we are not to your standing because we know that the Apostle Paul writes, for, Lord, he writes that we all fall short of the glory of God. There are none that are righteous. No, not one. For all I have seen, we fall short of the glory of God. God, when I think about that, that's depressing. And that's heartbreaking. Lord, that just destroys my joy. But, oh God, I thank you for the fact that you are the lifter of my head. I thank you for the fact that you are the beat of my heart. I thank you for the fact that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to come amongst us, to come, uh, to come into our existence. Father, that he came to love us. He came to live amongst us. And he came to show us how to love you, how to live how to be your people, and he died for us. Thank you for the fact that by his stripes, we are healed, and through his blood, we are washed white as snow. We are made acceptable. We are made whole. We are made right in your sight through your son, Jesus Christ, because he is our hope. He is our peace. He is our love. He is our joy. Thank you, God, that before we loved you, we first loved us. Oh, God, with everything we have and with everything we are, we want to give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. And, Father, as we come to you right now, Lord, we ask, Father, Lord, that if there's anything within our hearts and lives that will cause us to be at odds with you today, that, oh, God, in heaven, it be removed and that we stand in front of you clean and unashamed. And Father, as we come to you right now, dear Father, I ask, dear God, that you remove me right out of the way and that you speak to your people. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. As we pray to see your name. Amen. Good folks, if you have Ephesians chapter 2, 
verse 10. Would you please stand as we get ready to read from the word of God? If you know this by heart, you should. If you know this by heart, you can say it, but we'll read it. If you're not able to stand, I do understand that you are not standing. You can stay seated, but you are standing with us even though you are not able to stand. When you do have it, say amen. 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 We will read this together or quote it if you know it. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them or for us to do. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Ahead of time for us to do. What did we go through this week? Spark Studio. Doesn't that song get you energized? Yes. Doesn't that song get you excited? Amen. I know what some of y'all said. Thank God it's over. <laughs> I heard that from the back pew. Oh, <laughs> but she'll shout it out. You know, that's one of the most amazing stories this week. And folks, our title today is Spark Studio, Spread the Word. As we said before, this was to be the kickoff sermon for our BBS. But God saw fitting for it to be the closing verse, the closing sermon for VBS. You see, guys, this week has been a tremendous blessing. It has been. And I want to tell you why it's been a tremendous blessing. You see, when we first got here, that means me and my mom, when we first got here, there was only one child here. That was Sophie. Sophie was the only child here. And I prayed and I said, God, I know that you're going to do great things in this church. And your power and your presence is going to move in this church. And you're going to do great things with this church and through the people here. And you know, Satan has been riding me mm -hmm. for the longest time. I'm going to tell you why, church. Because every week we showed up here, I kept seeing the same people. And you get discouraged. I'm not discouraged at you. But I'm discouraged because I'm in myself. And I'm saying, you know what, God, I'm not seeing new faces. I'm not seeing new people. God, I'm not seeing this happen. And you know what God is saying? By the power of words. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing. Then he, told, he asked me this question. He said, Homer, can you see? And I said, wow, God, that's really nice to say with a person with only one good eye. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, that's true. He says, but can you see in your office? I said, yeah. He said, have you seen the wall? I said, yeah. He said, do you see the verse that's there? I said, yeah. He says, do you believe it? I said, yeah. he said, he stopped me before I could even say, he said, stop lying. It's something when God tells you to stop lying. Church, has God ever told you to stop lying? Mm. Got kind of quiet for a second. Got to ask this question. Has God ever told you to stop lying? Let me tell you what stop lying means. Many of you may be lying to yourself here in this church today. I'm good with God. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm walking the way that I'm supposed to be. You know, I'm on that upper road every day. I'm new gates, I'm hiding every day. No, no. No. Or are you still at the starting line of your faith? Is everyone else going farther ahead of you and you're still at start? When you came to church this morning, were you equipped? Were you ready for war? Are you ready for battle today? Church, ask yourself, 
Am I ready for warfare today? Go ahead and ask yourself. Are you ready for battle today? Did I come prepared for battle today? Because guess what? You came for battle today. There's a battle going on. Did you forget? There's a war going on. Did you forget? Or is everything so good that you have forgotten? Church, there's a war going on outside. And that's bad, isn't it? Yes. You see TV all the time, and it's telling you how bad the world is outside, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what they don't tell the bots? The more fierce, the more intense, and the more powerful war that is going on within you. Have you ever stopped and thought about the war that is going on within you? And are you prepared for war? Did you bring your Bible today? Or, I haven't looked in my Bible since last Sunday. What'd you do with it last Sunday? I threw it somewhere. Church, I'm not picking on nobody, but I am saying something powerful. Why? Because there's a lot of believers in here that the only time they've seen their Bible is when they picked it up from the, stop, from the spot where they threw it. Yes, last Sunday. And for some, they haven't seen their Bible. Why haven't you seen your Bible? Because you don't even know where you put it. You sat it down. And you said it sits in its spot. You know the most disrespectful thing that a person can say? Can you help me find my Bible? Well, where was it? I don't know. It's not sitting in its spot where it normally is. What do you mean? Well, see, you know, when I come home from church, I sit my Bible here so I know where it is when I go next Sunday to go to church. I pick my Bible up from that spot. What well, some of the most dangerous words they've ever said or what? I set my Bible down in this spot so that when I get ready to go to church on Sunday, I can do what? Which means what through the week? I ask the question again ready for war. The greatest war is going on within you, and are you prepared for war? Are you prepared for battle? Church, this isn't a joke. The Christian life isn't a joke. It's war going on. You see, this week, we've been singing songs. Spark Studio. Spark Studio. Created in Christ, designed for us purpose, Spark Studio. But has that just been words? Has that just been a song? You see, sometimes you can disregard the messengers, but hear the message. Or sometimes you can disregard the message the message, but listen to the messengers. But heaven forbid if you do this, miss the messengers and the message. Church, I got a question to ask. Mm -hmm. Did you hear the message all week? Did you see the messengers? You see the message. Or did you miss the message and the messengers? Church, the greatest disrespect that a believer in Christ can do is miss the message and the messengers. And you know the most hurtful thing of all? say that louder so you can hear it. We're the messengers. Jesus said, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. See, the power of those words is, first off, Jesus said. 
So the first thing you've got to put in place is, where do I stand with God? Where do I stand with Jesus? Do I just know Jesus' name? Or do I know him personally? Do I truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Or are we just two ships passing in the wind? We see each other, but we don't interact. Where are we? Our first point that we're looking at today is we are designed with a purpose. Wow. Hmm. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do work which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. You know, we started this, and I remember when we were getting ready for BBS, and one of the things that was important was, I remember, remember the first day? Some of you don't because it's a haze, because it's all started to run together after a while. And some of you were like, I've thrown it out of sight and out of mind. When Saturday was done, you said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, but the first day, I remember telling the kids and telling the teachers and telling the workers, hey, there's something important for you to remember. And here's what you to remember. Pay attention to Spark Studio, the first song you learned because there was a secret in it. And as people were listening, they started to get the secret. Why? Because the chorus was this verse. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. You see, there's something about that. You see, many people say, I can't learn the scripture. I can't remember the scripture. Can you remember a song? Let me ask you this question. Will you forget that one? Mm -hmm. Sing it all the time. You won't forget it. What does Because He Lived, the lyrics to Because He Lived, what's the first stanza start with? Wow. How old is that song? How old is that song? But you remember it know the importance of that song? It's one you love. If you love something, you'll remember it. Oh, wow. We were talking this morning in Sunday school, and as I say this all the time, and if I have forgotten to say this, please let me say this much. When we have our time of Sunday school, I encourage you, please make it to Sunday school, because sometimes some of the greatest conversations that we have before we get here to the sermon happen in Sunday school. And this happened in Sunday school. You know, our, our, our Sunday school teacher, such an awesome person, um, actually said, you know, um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Well, she didn't say it. I actually said it, but she was thinking. I just said it for her. She did the trillion. The point of it is, <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, it says, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your soul. Wow. You know the key point of that? First part of it. Hero is here. Listen. How many times this week did you actually stop and listen? You know what I heard that made my heart just skip a beat and made my heart cry and made me go through. I think I told you, church, I told you this this week. There was a song that we heard beforehand, and even today it happened. I was listening to this song, and I couldn't get through this song. It's what only God can do. I couldn't get through that song without crying. Why? Because every time I think what only God can do, it is something amazing. You see, what only God can do is he can think of a wretch like me, a person who could not change his faith, that had no way to change his course. But I thank God for Jesus Christ because he changed my fate. Why? I was meant for hell. The course I was on was leading me to hell. Why? Because I didn't have a relationship with God. But you know one of the most beautiful things about God? God loves us before we ever love him. 
God knows us before we ever know. Before I was formed in my mother's womb. Before I was formed in my mother's womb. Miss Katie, do a search for before I was formed in my mother's womb in your phone. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, you knew me. I am fearfully and wonderfully wow. God would tell Jeremiah, before you were formed, <coughs> before you were born, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart to be a prophet to the nations, or I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Wow. Isn't it something that God designs us <clears throat> with a purpose? Mm -hmm. Isn't it awesome that God already knows your name? Isn't it awesome that God already puts things in place for you? Aren't you glad? Yeah. Aren't you glad that God already knows your heart? Well, you know why he knows your heart? Because he's your creator. And the creator knows everything, right? right. Yeah. The creator knows how things work, how things operate, how things move, how things go. Mm -hmm. So, um, ooh, I got this cool thing I want to read to you. Y'all cool? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all know this is about to be an adventure. Mm -hmm. Pastor only got one good eye, and this one good eye is on God's word, so... Bear with me. We're going to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. So uh, y'all can help a brother out. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. And then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. May God be, pre be, God be pleased and blessed by the reading of his holy word. You see, we were designed with a purpose. And it's not just that we were designed by with a purpose. It's who we were designed by and who, were, who we were designed to look like. Mm -hmm. Wow. Miss Katie points back to the very conversation we were having, doesn't it? You're designed with a purpose, and who you're designed to look like is something important. You see, many times we look at the situation of where we are and we miss something important. You see, sometimes we miss the messengers and we also miss the message. You know, sometimes I love, I love uh, Because He Lives because when you listen to Because He Lives, the second, second stanza, it tells us how sweet to hold a newborn baby and see the pride and joy he gives. Well, there's something important, remember? It says, how sweet to hold a newborn baby. You know one of the cool things about a newborn baby? A newborn baby has a purpose. You know what the purpose is? To be loved. To be cared for. To have a future. And to hope. Before you were even born. I know the plans that I have. Good God mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts before I ever was born. So listen, church, can I preach for a moment? Mm -hmm. Do y'all mind if I preach for a moment? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm going to keep it to a moment. The congregation said keep it to a moment. I'm going to keep it to a moment. Here it is. Listen, before. You know what before means? Do you know what before means? It means the absence of something being in existence. Something that, that is to be existed, it is the essence of that thing that is supposed to be there. It is the absence of essence that is supposed to be there. In other words, an item that is supposed to be created that has not been created yet means that before it even was, it did not exist. So before you existed, God already knew your name and already knew the thoughts that he thinks towards you. He thought of the plans that he has for you. He already designed you with a purpose. He already put you in a place. God already knew what you were going to do. Everything. Everything. Some things? No. Everything. Before you were even born, he wrote out the days of your life. Isn't that say, doesn't that say something special about us? Mm -hmm. But doesn't that say something even more when you personalize it? Doesn't it say something about you? Church, stop and think about this for a second. When I say church, I'm talking, I'm talking collectively. But do you mind, church, if I talk to you personally? Do you mind if I talk to you personally? Personalize the scripture. Can I share a truth with you? Yes. And please give me grace, church. Please give me grace. You know why the scripture doesn't have the impact in your life that it should have? Because you don't personalize it. You don't personalize say, what do you mean, Pastor? Many times when we read God's word, we generalize what we're reading. But do you internalize and personalize what you're reading? Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. When we look at you, we treat you as Global, collective, encompassing. It means all. But do you know what he's saying when he says you? He's not talking about collective. He's not talking about global. He's talking intentionally and specific. And he's talking to you. You. You, you, you. Aren't you glad God's talking to you? Amen. But how many times do we miss the message? And forsake the messenger. Church. I hope and pray that you get it. Hope and pray that you hear it. You see, God designed us with a purpose. And the purpose is to love him. You know one of the most beautiful things that we don't sometimes sit and think about and personalize? And I know this is why we don't do it. Because we know and have been beat down with the knowledge of our sinful nature. We know we have it. Many folks, when they come to church, this is one of the things that they say. They say, I don't want to go to church. Why? Because they're going to tell me about my sinful nature. They're going to tell me about all the stuff I did. They're going to tell me about all the wrongs I've done. And it's true. We are. I ain't going to lie. We are. We should. But you know one thing that we should also tell them, dear brother? What you were like before. See, if I only hear about what I was, what I am now, but I never hear about what the real intention 
of my life was supposed to be and how I can get to that point. Man, I wouldn't want to go to church either. <coughs> Would you want to go to church? If all you walk in the door is doom and gloom, you go in there. When you walk into the door, yo, okay, I'm going home. To give me time, man. We wonder why our churches are not full. We wonder why the seats are empty. There's two things that are wrong. One could be our approach. We stop to think about that. One could be our approach. How we're approaching people. If we're approaching you and telling you you go into hell right off the bat, <coughs> we ain't told you about the love that God <coughs> has for you, huh? Mm -hmm. We just told you where the destination of your life is. We didn't tell you about the fact that God wants you to spend eternity with him, that he has made it possible for you to have a relationship with him that is real and personal, that before the fall of man, that in the cool of the day, God came and he sat with man in the cool of the day. And I asked a question before to our class, and I asked this question. Can God do that again? Can God come and sit with us in the cool of the day? You know what I heard? Miss Jackie, can I ask you a question? Can I ask can, do you know what they told me? They said, I don't think so. Oh no. He does. He does, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? Yes, of course he does. You see, guys, listen. You know why he doesn't come and kick it with you in the cool of the day? Because you don't want him to. When your sin is standing in the way, when you're putting yourself in the way, when you're not trying to have that type of relationship with him that is real and personal, where you're not seeking him first, where you're not putting him first, then guess what? You're telling him the first thing on my mind and on my heart is not you. That's what you're telling him. That's what you're saying to him. That's what you're making known to him. And guess what? That breaks his heart. Because that's not what he designed you for. Mm -hmm. That's not what he designed us to be. Do you know he loves you? No. You need to say that with some conviction. Do you know he loves you? Amen. To say that one more time because I'm not hearing conviction. Do you know he loves you? Amen. Do you know he loves you? Do you know he loves you? He doesn't give you this if he doesn't love you. Did you stop and think about that this morning? You see, this thing that you can't find because you threw it somewhere and you don't know where it is, when you have to ask people to help you find your Bible because you don't know where your Bible is, the reason you can't find it is because you don't know that God loves you. Like he loves you. Why don't you know? Because you don't read it. Do you know what this really is? I could ask you this, how much did you pay for your Bible? You might say $49.99, $29.99, $19.99, $9.99, $139.99, $129.99, $119.99. Might have been free, might have been given to you. It was an inheritance you might have got. You know what you really have? You really have an expensive mirror. You know what you're saying now? Oh, Lord, what are you talking about? This passage went off the deep end. As Jackie said, I was on the tugboat with you a couple minutes ago, but I done jumped off and grabbed the lifeboat because I don't know where you're going. Here's what it is. Do you know that every time you open God's word, this is a mirror. You know what the mirror is? You being able to see yourself in his word. What you miss the message in between the message message is, hey, I love him. I want you to look more like me, less like the world. 
Isn't it something when someone goes up to you and says, you know what, you look very nice today. Or you look pretty today. Don't you like that? I do, I wish y'all would say that more. <laughs> Point of the nature is, that happens, and sometimes, guess what? Just a simple thing of saying, hey, I just called to say I love you. That song shot up to number one on the pop chart. Stevie Wonder, one of the greatest hits. Do you know there are prisoners today that still call their mothers on Mother's Day when they get an opportunity to call on the phone? What they they call their mom and guess what? Hey mom, look, I'm just calling to say I love you. I'm serving two life sentences because what I did when I was out and free, I did things wrong. But you know, while I'm locked up, I had to put into perspective mm -hmm. the things that mattered. And one of the first things that mattered was you, mama, because when no one else loved me, you loved me. Mm -hmm. Guess what? God tells you I love you every time you open this book. Have you read the cover? Let's look. Do you see it? You see it on the cover? What does it say? It says I. You see the spine? It says love or heart. See the back? It says you. So every time you hold this, I love you. 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 Sometimes we miss the messenger and miss the message. Don't miss the message, folks. Please don't forget the messenger. Don't forget the messengers. Because you know why? We've been called to be a messenger. To tell people of the love of God. But how can we tell people about something that we don't know or experience? Isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. Why do we do, you know why we do VBS? Why we do vacation Bible school? It's not so we learn Spark Studio. I love that. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna listen to that music from now on, man. There's a few BBSs where the music is still sticks. This is one of those ones that sticks with me. I'm listening to it all the time. But you know why it's done like that? So you don't forget the message that God loves you. That's the whole purpose. That's why BBS is there. It's so that children can hear the message that God loves them and for them to come to faith in him. The greatest testimony of your VBS is not the fact that it's over. So I know all y'all that said, thank you, Jesus, it's over. Woo, I'm done. I ain't got to teach them brats no more. No, that's not the greatest testimony hmm. of VBS. You know what the greatest testimony of VBS is? It's when all the songs are done. teaching has been given. And when the child reflects on the message they heard that they say with their own life, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I don't want to be anymore. I give my life to you. And wherever you the greatest testimony of the yes. The other
greatest testimony of your VBS is when you close your eyes for the final time and you cross heaven's shores. Church, I may cry when I say this because it, I mean this and I love this and I know this. My dear sister Jackie, she knows this. My mother, she knows this. And I pray to God that each one of you knows this and feel this. I can't wait for that day when we cross heaven's shores. And when we get there, Jesus says that I have a group of people that have been waiting to meet you. And you say, who? My mom? My dad? He said, no. But you're going to love to meet them, because they've been waiting to meet you. You come and you say, hey, who are you? You don't remember me? You don't remember me? Miss Jackie, I'm going to use you. Miss Jackie, Miss Jackie, Miss Jackie. Hey, you. I don't remember your name. Oh, I know you don't know my name, but I know yours. You remember, you remember Caleb? Yeah. Well, guess what? Lord, I pray this, that this is what you do with this young man. Caleb became a missionary. And he went around the world sharing the love of God with all the people he came in contact with. And he told us about this lady that during VBS, he spent this time with, it was called Spark Studio, and her name was Jackie. And I want to tell you this, I can't wait to meet Jackie. I couldn't wait to meet Jackie. I pray because God helped me in my little village where I lived, in the, in the place where I lived, in the country where I was. God sent Caleb to go there and to share Christ, and it started right here at this VBS with a lady named Jackie and this child she ain't never met. Can't wait to see Miss Jackie when she gets and crosses heaven's shores. Oh, folks, do you know how many people are waiting for you? Do you know how many people can't wait till you get there because they need to say thank you? Do you know how many people are waiting for you? Or are we so caught in us that we're missing the message and the messengers? Folks, don't miss the message. Please don't miss the messengers. We are redesigned for God's purpose. There are some great painters, great sculptors that are in the world, but I want to ask you if you know these names. You know Bob Ross? Mm -hmm. Do you know Leonardo da Vinci? Mm -hmm. Do you know Michelangelo? Mm -hmm. And no, I was not. Jackie. This was already in here. So when you started talking about this, I know she must have loved you. You know one of the things they all have in common? God. Mm -hmm. You say, why? Michelangelo on the Sistine Chapel has one of the most beautiful, amazing things that is up there. It's amazing. It was dedicated to the church. He painted it. Leonardo da Vinci would create the sculpture of David. And it is one of the most world famous, most sought after, most seen sculptors out there of David. But then there's a dude by the name of Bob Ross. Bob Ross was this heavy dude with afro and a paintbrush and a heart of gold. And as he would go, he would paint. And when he painted, he would encourage young people, and yes, even a young Homer Gene Evans Jr. to paint. And when Bob Ross got done, he would have this happy little tree 
and a forest and a river and this nice scene of nature and Hall Homer in his junior hat was a mess on his paper. And every single time the episode ended, I would look at the TV and I would say, this, how come mine don't look like yours? <laughs> In my heart, it looked like his. On my paper, it looked, mm. <laughs> But you know what? What all three of them have in, in court? God. You know why? Bob Ross, a believer. He's a believer. And on top of that, he used his gift as a way to share not only Christ, but the love of painting that God gave him to always do it. That's why everything he did was in nature's. At the end of his life, they ended up selling, selling one of his paintings. You know how much one of the Bob Ross paintings went for? An actual Bob Ross painting? $25 million. And guess why it was so much? It was on TV. It was authenticated on TV. They saw him painting. So the same painting that he painted went for $25 million. You know why I'm saying that? I'm not saying it because of the dollar amount. I'm not saying it so you go, wow, $25 million. No, that's not why. Why I'm saying it is because here's the thing. God gave him a gift. And he used that gift for his purpose. You know, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 6, God says something to Jeremiah. I'm going to lead up to that. So if you go from 1 to 6, this is the conversation that happens. God tells Jeremiah, he says, I want you to go down to the potter's house. And when you get to the potter's house, I'm going to tell you what the message is there that you're to share with the people. So Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house. He listens to what God says, goes down to the potter's house. And what so happens? The potter is there. And he's working with the clay. And as he's working with clay, he has this thing that he's made. But you know, it just doesn't seem right to him. So what he does is that he crumbles it up and he reworks it and refashions it into something else that he wants it to be. And just as he was doing that, God spoke to Jeremiah. And this is what he said. He said, say to the children of Israel, O Israel, can't I do the same to you as that which the potter has done to the clay? Church, I want to ask a question to you today. Can God do with you what he wants to do? Can he remake you, refashion you, reshape you into what he wants you to be? Can he fix you? Because you see, some of us, we come in and we have broken pieces. You may have a handle that's missing. You may have a tear in your heart. You know one of the most beautiful things about God? God mends broken hearts. God fixes broken lives. God puts back together broken. You see, people that you didn't think God can use. God can use. Mm -hmm. Can God use me? Mm -hmm. There are many people that didn't think God could use me. Many report cards, many parent-teacher conferences, many people would say, you know what, I worry about this kid. Why? He doesn't mean a stranger. But this was the other thing. You know, Homer talks too much. He talks too much. He talks in class too much. Yes, your pastor got beatings. Talking too much in class. How are you going to know more than the teacher? How are you going to talk when the teacher talking? You ain't going to learn. That's true. But you know the question that never got asked? You know the question that never got asked? Homer, what were you talking about? You know that question never gets asked? You know why? Because that's not important. I send you to school to learn, not for you to sit there and be talking. Right? Parents, isn't that the conversation y'all have? Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big boy now. 
down for me? <laughs> now, the point of the nature is, many times we don't ask the question, hey, what were you talking about? Why you got in trouble? Why did the teacher say, hey, I had to single you out? And you know what? This is the thing. Hey, the kid behind me was poking me, and I kept telling him, stop it. And the teacher turned around and said, hey, you need to stop talking. I'm going to write your name on the board one more time, and you're getting in trouble. you got to do the rules. Why was I getting in trouble? Because the person next to me was talking, and I was telling them to stop. And you were in the middle not listening. And I was trying to get your attention as a teacher, but you weren't listening. So I had to take the matters into my own hands. And I got in trouble. Or, that's one scenario. What if the other scenario was this? I had such a great time in church. And what I was doing was inviting my friend to come to church. I was so excited. I, we found a time when the teacher wasn't talking, so I was sharing with him. But she saw me talking, but she never asked me what I was talking about because I probably would have invited her too. Sometimes we don't ask that question, do we? No. Sometimes we're only looking at our situation. But God is good because he redesigns us and refashions us with a purpose. Hmm. I have one more point. I know what y'all say. Thank you, Jesus. No wonder that the teachers used to say, oh, boy, he talks too much. He talks too much now. But I got a question. You ready to go? I know some of y'all say, yes, Lord, let me put my Bible back in my bag. No, that's not the goal that I'm talking about. <laughs> are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Church, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. See, you've been singing all week, those that have been here. And those of you here today, you heard, if you sent your kids here for the days they were here, they have heard, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Well, guess what? I'm now asking you a question. Are you ready to go? What? To do the work which God has prepared ahead of time for us to do, ahead of time for us to do. What? Spark Studio, your Spark Studio, your created in Christ, designed for his purpose, your Spark Studio, X18. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Or did you miss it? If you need to, go back, find all those videos, Spark Studio, VBS 2022. Find them, watch them all, listen to them all. We've got the material. If you want to go back over it again, go back over it. But please, don't miss the message, nor the messengers, because the message is, you're a messenger, and you have a tremendous message to give. Revelations chapter 3 verse 20 says this. Jesus is speaking. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door now. If anyone opens the door, I will enter in and sup with him and he with me. Church, we had fun this week, didn't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a blast this week. I had a great time. I hate it's over. I really do. I hate that the VBS time is over. But guess what? VBS is still going. See, Vacation Bible School is still going. I know some of you parents are saying, all oh, my kids getting ready to go back to school. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, ooh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Y'all heard it back there. I heard you Santa is the wonderful time. 
your keys on the other hand. <laughs> but does vacation Bible school stop? No. You know the saddest part of this church? In some houses, in some hearts, you know when vacation Bible school stopped? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know why I say that? Look here today. One of the most heartbreaking things. I heard this from Beverly Richardson, who was the retiring missionary for the Heshemite Kingdom of Jordan. When I was a junior in high school, God gave me the opportunity to go to the Heshemite Kingdom of Jordan. Jordan. The country. Jordan. Yeah, that same Jordan that you read about when Jesus went to Jerusalem and he went to Israel, Jordan, Egypt, Jordan, that country, Jordan. I've been there. Been there. I was there when the, at the time, she was getting ready to retire. The missionary to Jordan, she was going one last time before she came back over. And I got to spend my summer there as a missionary, teaching English as a second language to children in Ashley, Jordan. That's a memory I'll never forget. But it all started with this. Behold, I stand for the And if anyone opened the door, I will enter in and sub with him and he with me. I couldn't do it by my own power. I couldn't do it by my own might. But through God's spirit and his power, his grace, I was able to do it. You see, folks, are you ready to go? You see, you have to look and see God's version of what the picture actually looks like. You see, many of us, we're looking to way too small. You're looking at Jerusalem, and God may be sending you to Judea. You're looking at Jerusalem, and God may be, or you might be looking at Judea, and God may be sending you to Samaria. Or you might be looking at Samaria, and God is sending you to the uttermost ends of the earth. Some of you are saying, yeah, that's where God is sending me. He's sending me to the ends of the earth. And know where he's really sending you? Right next door. Right next door where? Yo, house. What? I don't want to go there. Let me ask you this. Does God's saving power have the same power to the uttermost ends of the earth? as it does to your neighbor not right next door? Yeah. Yes. Is there any difference between sharing God with your neighbor that lives right next door and to the person who lives all the way across the world? The only difference is the destination, but the message is still the same, isn't it? Yes. And the messenger will be affected by the journey, amen? So I ask the question today, are you ready to go? Wherever he sends, wherever he leads, I'll go, is one of the songs that we sing. But I ask you this question today, are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Because if you're not ready to go, it's time to get ready. It's time to change. It's time to say, God, where you want me to go is where I'm going. Even if it's right next door or even it's to the end of the earth. I'm going. In Revelation chapter 6, there is a conversation that the martyrs in Christ, they ask for their blood to be avenged. The martyr is a person who dies for Christ. And they ask God, when will we be avenged? And his answer to them is, 
when the number of those who have died for my name's sake has been reached. I ask you a question. Are you ready to go? I know what you're saying. What is he asking me to die for Christ? You may call for him. Because you may go to a country, God may send you to a place where it is illegal for you to share Jesus Christ. And being caught sharing Jesus Christ means it costs you your life. But see, the beautiful thing about that is, is though you may lose your life for Christ, you don't lose it. You gain. Because you know why? Some of the most beautiful messages and beautiful testimonies of all is when they go back to areas where before people were put to death for Jesus Christ and now churches, pastors, evangelists, missionaries are coming out of those same places where before they were putting people to death. You don't think God can do it. I'm telling you, he can. But it starts when you are winning, willing, and ready to go. So my question to you is, are you ready to go? Because if God is calling you, whether you are two or 92 or 102, God is still calling you. And are you ready to go? If you are, then I've just got one thing to tell you. Choose Jesus today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day. And thank you for the blessings that you give. And Father, as we come here today, we just celebrate you. Father, thank you for this time that we can spend in worship. Thank you for this time we can spend, God, reflecting on you. And Father, with everything we have and everything we are, we want to give you praise, honor, and glory. And Father, if there's someone today that needs to give their life to you, I pray, Father, that they would surrender today. Father, if you're calling me to go wherever you're leading, Father, that they would go where you're leading. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Because you alone are worthy of all our honor, all our praise. Father, with everything we have, we say that we love you. For it's in Jesus' name.